four of them. Count them. Four. Here are four of the people who occupied the center of our popular culture over the past 25 years. First, I am honored to present the world heavyweight champion of 1978. 43 wins, seven losses, 33 knockouts. Here is Ken Norton, right here. <laughs> The heavyweight champion of the world, 1978 to 1985, 48 wins, three losses, 34 knockouts. Here is Larry Holmes. Heavyweight champion from 1970 to 73, 33 wins, four losses, 27 knockouts. This is Smoking Joe Fraser. Right here. And now it is my honor to present. A political figure of the 20th century. He is still pretty. He is still the greatest. He is the heavyweight champion of the world forever. This is Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Tomorrow at noon, Oprah goes in search of New York women who possess classic chic. I'll tell you, it's been a while. Show them that little bit of film. I just want to take you down memory lane. Here are some of uh, today's guests at work. Here are the people who have thrilled us, not only here, but around the world. You can roll that and I'll just gab a little bit. Here are, uh, here is a piece from uh, a videotape titled Champions Forever. This uh, is early in the career of Smoke and Joe. And there's just one fight that the referee decided shall continue no more. Here are four gentlemen who moved billions and billions of dollars from one pocket to the other as people around the world alternately were thrilled and appalled at this activity of professional sport, which we can only conclude will never ever be erased from a free society. Nor will the criticism of two grown men standing in the ring trying to knock each other senseless. Here is the reigning heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson, at work. This could be Las Vegas. This could be anywhere. What is it about us that draws us to ringside every time the big guys get in the ring? And look how pretty you still are. <laughs> Prettiest nose in the history of boxing. Uh, remember the, you know, sometimes more fun during the pre-fight than there was during the match. Are we ready with the mouth that roared? Here's the poet and the man who is a promotion manager's dream. I mean, could he sell tickets or what? Just take this quick look at boxing history. Close your mouth and just keep it closed. Well, you know that's impossible. No, 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 keep it closed. You know that's impossible. I'm the greatest. And I'm knocking out all bones. 
And if you get too small, I'll knock you out. Now, close your mouth for just a minute. You can leave it closed for 10 seconds. Well, that's impossible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Henry Cooper's nothing to me. Uh, if this bum go over five rounds, I won't return to the United States for 30 days. That's final. Okay, since you're not worried about this guy Cooper, uh, how about when you get through with him? What are your plans after that? Well, uh, you're right. I'm not even worried about this big bum. Uh, Cooper will only be a warm-up until I get to that big, ugly bear, Sonny Liston. Right, bodyguard? I walked in the L London England. I jumped out the airplane. Cameraman, everywhere I go, you can look in the gym today. The TV, the cameraman, everybody follows me. I'm so great. I saw Sonny Liston a few days ago, Cash. Ain't he ugly? <laughs> he's, he's too ugly to be the world champ. The world champ should be pretty like me. Well, he told me to bet my life that you wouldn't go three rounds. Well, if you want to lose your money, then bet on Sunday. Oh, uh, may I ask you Because this? I'll never lose a fight. It's impossible. Tell him. It's impossible. Never to lost a beat. fight in your life. They're seeing my fans when the last time they lost. I'm too fast. Champion from I'm the, the crib. I'm the king. Born the crib. Born the champ from the crib. Ah! Are you taking Zora Foley too lightly? Why would you say that? Because every indication has been that you're confident that you can beat Zara. I'm confident I can whoop all of them. This ain't nothing new. My image has been confident. What you're trying to make it look like something new for? I'm always confident I can whoop all of them. You're being extremely truculent. Whatever truculent mean, if that's good, I'm there. Well, there he was. Were they the good old days? I was crazy. You were what? Wow. You look at that and what do you think, champ? And the king believes me. Uh -huh. You know you sold a lot of tickets, didn't you? I didn't realize I talked that much. Huh? You didn't realize you talked as much? <laughs> uh huh. You feel good. You feel good right now? I feel like trying Joe Fraser. You feel, you feel what? Like, Who wants to trade Joe Fraser? Uh -huh. <laughs> now, Muhammad, don't get crazy. I got some questions for you from an adoring public worldwide that is more than a little concerned about your physical well-being. Are you ready? <laughs> I feel pretty good. Yeah. I don't know. You are slower of speech than you were in the good old days. I'll tell you everything I know about you, and you'll tell me whether I got I'm it right. Well, look, it's going to be a war. No, it isn't. No. You're, you're not coming nobody after nobody me, are you, Chan? <laughs> you're not coming after me. It's going to get no, nobody no. Here. <laughs> I got you. I ask these questions with, you cannot you get out me, from under the curiosity and the empathy that people have you for you. You told me backstage you won't ask no more questions. No, I, I just have one. You lied. Uh-huh. Wait, no, no. Uh, I, one, uh, your ex-wife was here. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, um, now, what is not so funny, Muhammad, is it, do you have Parkinson? What is that? Do you shake? No. That's pretty steady. That's good. That's what he called to me. He does? No, he doesn't wrong with me. Well, now, do you mind if I talk to your brothers here about uh, you? Just for a second? Now, wait a minute, not the wrong part, okay? Well, just, no, you'll come okay. straight now. Okay. Yeah. A lot of folks out there who make their lives about condemning what you did for a living. Right. They think it's immoral. Knock I love people it. around, that's silly, that's rearrange the wheels in their head. That's because of blast control. Huh? That's because we control boxing. You control boxing? We're the champs. You, you are the champs. White men don't stand champs. But here's the question. <laughs> You're all free to jump in here. Come on. Is Muhammad's speech slower because he took too many shots to the head, I'm asking? I don't really think that uh, comes from... Me. Yeah, <laughs> right? There you go. I just want you there. There you go. Tell him, Joe. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. I would say that... Uh, you know, the people who really got Parkinson, they never boxed. Uh, there are a lot of people who have Parkinson's who never boxed. You make a point, my what good you man. Getting Besides, he's talking slow because we've been up since 6 o'clock this morning. Uh -huh. <laughs> All day We're long. Tired. Yes, yeah. you are. Yes, you are. You want to make a contribution to this, Ken? Any thoughts about it? I'll tell you this. I don't want you mad at me either. <laughs> well, let me see. I feel that through... It's not from Boston, no. It's not from Boston. No. Mine from an accident. 
and the all is zoning the here. It's a disease. It's a disease can strike anybody, whether you're heavyweight champion of the world or a talk show host. It's an improvement. And don't forget it. I won't forget it. I won't forget it. Well, has it been a good life, smoking Joe? I mean, when you look back, come on. Uh, I would say that uh, without the years of uh, defined people that have been involved with around the world and the Lord, yeah. And Mama and Daddy and all my family yeah. they did a fine job with me and uh, I just love living. I mean for the people because uh, I just work now for my boys and other young men in the gymnasium and Larry and Patterson and Muhammad and whoever I can yeah. make it do it, you know, that's I just love doing it. Yeah. You know? Now let me tell you just there's one other question now. <laughs> all right. You <laughs> yeah, don't walk that. out on me. Right. Have you got any money? It was. <laughs> you ever hear me? I'm almost as rich as you. Rich? <laughs> really? Oh, <man. laughs> well, you know, poor, poor Joe, Joe Lewis, died broke. Who took it? Who said that? Who took it? You tell me. The government. The government. Uh, and were you smart enough to make sure that you were invested in a way, you know, you may... Hold, you made baskets full in it. No, well, are you smart enough to invest yours? I, I'm, I'm sorry? Are you smart enough to invest yours? Well, I am. I hope I am. Well, I hope I am. Uh, I hope you are, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, why would you be upset at that question? The history of boxing is one of the exploitation of young men like you. I think, I think b fighters are smarter today than they were in the day that Joe Lewis came. I think manager had more control over the fighters than they do today. Uh, fighters are promoting their own fights. Take, for instance, Sugar Ray Leonard. He's promoting his own fights, and he's getting, uh, say, 90% of the cut. Yes, so that makes him much smarter than the, the average Joe back in those days. Fighters today have much more, but opportunities, you know, for these fighters to get that money is very slim. They got to be tough. Yeah. What well, you wanted to say, Joe, about this issue, money? Well, I feel like uh, any one man, if, if, if the manager doesn't uh, take control of the money, uh, let's say, and he went away with it and do this and that with the man's money, but the day is different. Where the fire has his own idea of what he wants to do with money, and this is the right thing. And don't forget, pay uncle. you, you got to pay uncle. There's <laughs> no doubt about that. So I, I feel like uh, fighters doing a smarter thing with the money that they can invest in. I live off investment myself. Do you? Yeah. Well, these guests will not be upset if I remind our viewers that available at bookstores around the world, not to mention other places, is a videotape titled Champions Forever. It is a tape I have seen, and you talk about down memory tell lane. Tell where you can get that tape so we can make money. Well, you tell them now. You tell them, Kenny. You tell them. Uh, you tell them, Larry. What's that, Walmart? Walmart? Uh, Walden. Walmart. Walden. Walden. Walden Books. Books, yeah. I just want to share with right. this audience... Uh, uh-huh. Okay. Uh, Ali versus Fraser. Fraser beat you, champ. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's the, that's the hardest punch I ever think you took in your whole career. You remember it? Uh, why are you agitating? Huh? Why am I showing it? <laughs> I'm not agitating. This is on the tape. You have an arm reach. <laughs> this is, I know, you got a longer arm reach. I want should, you to... Should we beat him up in here? No, 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 don't do that. I got kids and a wife and a dog. You, you don't want to hurt me. Here it is, uh, 1971. Incidentally, it was 1970. It was 1970, the Supreme Court decision overturned the suspension of Muhammad Ali as the heavyweight champion of the world because he refused to fight in the Vietnam War. Here's a man who stood up courageously, not only in the ring, but outside as well. Ali's uh, status as a boxer is restored, and here he is working against Smokin' Joe Fraser in the green. You are going to see something rare here. Here is Muhammad Ali about to take as big a shot as he ever took in his career. You'll see the seconds wind down. Look at this hot dog here. The performance is on, but you've got to believe that Ali is hurt. Watch this. A hundred and ninety pounds. 99. Champ says he weighed a hundred and ninety pounds during this fight. There's a good left. Now look at this. Still, still performing. Here is Smokin' Joe Fraser's greatest fight. 
They called it the fight of the century. 1971, Ali is on his heels. Stand by for a big left hook. Uh. Here it is. Oh. Oh. This is from the tape, Champions Forever. Darn. Now That's you it. see this in slow mo. <laughs> Look at this. Watch this. Watch this left. That's it. Oh. That's as, that's as uh, big a shot as uh, Muhammad Ali ever took. And, Joe, this was not necessarily uh, an easy thing for you to knock off a very popular uh, champion. And there were people at the time who, uh, I remember you and I worked a prison that's shortly right. after that, the Ohio State Penitentiary, and there we were with an audience filled with Really uh, serious a convicts, we might say. That's yeah, right. tough guy. I, I, I stood next to you and called you sir for the yeah. whole hour. Um, a guy stood up, I remember a lifer stood up and said, Are you the great white hope? Do you yeah. remember that? That upset yeah. you, kid. Yeah, well, I put all of because against my man here. Uh, he started out the uh, uh, Tom stuff. That's why we had so much problem with our promotion during the years as he went by because he called me a Tom and I never know what a Tom was because I never peep in nobody's window. So, <laughs> by those days, I didn't quite yeah. understand what he was saying. <laughs> and then what I did, what I found what it really was all about, oh, yeah. I called me Uncle Tom. I was trying to sell tickets. You know? <laughs> I'm glad you waited, caller. Go ahead. Well, I got a good question for uh, Joe Frazier, who I respect very much, as well as all the other fighters. Yes. Joe, I'm a young father myself. What I want to know is, how can you push your son into the ring, let him fight those world-class fighters when he is not the fighter you were? And by the way, that was a hell of a fight. What a punch that was. But please, answer the question. Come on, what do you say? How did he feel it? He, he wants to know whether you're not, you're just, uh, maybe uh, you got more hope and enthusiasm for your son than the talent would suggest, and you're putting him against superior people, and maybe that's not well, such uh, number a... Number one, I, I thought that Marvis uh, had, a, let's say, a good record when he faced uh, uh, Mr. Holmes here. Yeah. He got hit with a shot, and I think uh, you've seen the greatest here. Uh, my number, my fight was less than his own, and then I put him down, so therefore that has nothing to do the man getting caught with a shot. Uh, I thought Ma was ready at the time. Uh, Larry knocked him down to stop the fight. So I wasn't going to argue about it, but stopping, I think there was w one second the bell would ring. He had a better chance, but uh, that's the name of the fight. And Any he was getting a million dollars for that fight. He got a million? That's right. Any comment about uh, this young man's offspring? Marvis? Yeah. I think it was good to get the million dollars because how often can you make a million dollars? coming from the ghetto I have, to, Rarely. I have to say for four men who have taken and given a lot of punches you look you all look great but <laughs> but beside that do you think were all the training and all the fighting and all the punches that you took was it worth it what you put your body through I have 14 million dollars worth of property and plus I'm still a multi-millionaire <laughs> Yeah. Next question. Next question, yeah. Are any of you sorry you did this? No. I'm sorry I got old. Uh -huh. <laughs> would any of you do it differently? Uh, I would tell you we'll eliminate some of the people, but we'll do the same thing. Uh, we'll sacrifice and go through the same procedure. But the people that are there now that uh, I don't guess should be there, we eliminate that and we'll do it ourselves. Uh, we got the lines jammed here, but I got so much, uh, I got some fight uh, footage I want to show you. Are you there? Hi. Hello. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I'd like to ask Joe Frazier how he would rank Mike Tyson among the greatest, uh, heavyweights of all time, and how he thinks Mike Tyson would have done against Muhammad Ali in his prime. Well, number one, I, I really don't think Mike is that far out of range, uh, for uh, all our gentlemen up here. 
uh, let's say, Mike is fighting guys that really, uh, I would say, not quite in the vocabulary that he is at a particular time. Now, I usually say things that which people might don't quite understand. Uh, you don't put a truck up against an 18 wheeler. You know what I mean? A Volkswagen. You have to get as big a truck. And all these guys that Mike has faced, Mike has faced maybe one or two heavyweights. Once was Larry. And I was over the hill. And Larry, well, <laughs> I don't think Larry's over the hill. Yeah. Uh, well, Larry, <clears throat> I got a lot of guys up here, which is uh, is my uh, friends, and they probably can understand. But all, all these guys that stand up here, you got one full flush heavyweight that sits here on this chair, on this desk. One. Me? Okay. Me? Uh -huh. Me? <laughs> Uh, you, I'm you, the only full flush heavyweight up here. Yes, sir. And that makes a difference. Yeah. Yes, right. sir. I'm Alonzo Knowles, and I would like to ask Muhammad Ali a question. Go ahead. All right. Um, I know you wrote The Greatest, right? Or you, they did an adaptation uh, for The Greatest from your writing. But I'm a boxer and I'm a playwright, right? And I think it's a new breed of fighters coming. Everyone thinks fighters are silly, that they don't, they don't know anything. They're from the ghetto and from this. But I'm a playwright coming into boxing. I'm going to make my professional debut. So I, I think that you should look at fighters not just as ignorance, but the people who are, who, who are, who are audacious yeah. and trying to get ahead. I assure you that's how I look at you as well, we stand that? next to each other. Yeah. Who says fighters even? Yeah. Nobody here Nobody says that. that. No. Yeah. We're fighters. Well, I have a... Uh, first of all, I'd like to say to Larry Holmes that uh, I think uh, you did a very good job throughout your career battling the media. And I, you know, but I have a question as far as headgear. I know they always throw that into it. Do you think that effort will come about in uh, professional boxing or, or not? Uh, you know, myself, I welcome the headgear, you know, because why should these guys take the blow, you know, without the head guard? I think you can have just as much damage with the head guard as you can without it. I would like to see the fighters use a small head guard like they do in the amateur or the Olympics and whatnot. But again, people won't want that because they would think of another form of exhibition and they would not pay the dollars. But I, I like it. anything to help the fighters and help them uh, accomplish their goals, I'm for it. I want to show you uh, two of the uh, talented men who are on our stage uh, facing off. This is Norton versus Holmes. I don't, I don't remember the year. But, 1978, uh, June 9th. June 9th, 1978. Watch this. For some unknown reason, Larry remembers. Look at this. Look at this. Larry Holmes has done it. You're never going to forget that night. Are you? What a wonder. He cheated. <laughs> we'll be back to discuss this further in just a moment. Yes, yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, I'd like to know if it, what any or all of you plan to do with the rest of your lives now. I bought a boat. Good for you. <laughs> hey. I'm going fishing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like water. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny? Well, my first thing is to go with the rehab and get better. Well, how long ago was the accident, auto accident? About three and a half years. And you're gimpy still, aren't you? You're going to be a gimp. <laughs> well, you know, you got yourself a well, hobble. Yeah, I, I was, I, it was pretty bad. Yeah? I was paralyzed for about two years. And, but things are coming back. Voice is gone. But... God wasn't ready, so I'm still here. You sure are. And looking good. This question's for Muhammad Ali. Um, you had said that there are people with Parkinson's that do not box. So do you honestly feel that your career didn't attribute to your illnesses at all? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it was boxing. You don't think it was boxing? No. It's a disease that... Uh, would have had its onset if you were an accountant or worked for IBM. Uh, we saw you took a shot, uh, take a shot from uh, Joe Fraser. Now it is 1974, and you are to be heard from. Here is Fraser versus Ali from the videotape titled Champions Forever. Here is uh, Muhammad Ali getting even with Smoking Joe. Roll the tape. 
going to get more injured. <laughs> Joe Frazier in trouble here in round two. Here, ref the 12th round. And there's the end of this sensational fight. Muhammad Ali with the unanimous decision in one. A TKO or a, a decision by, uh, by Ali. Didn't take you long to come back, champ. Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Good, Coach? holding up. Well. Uh, addressing this to uh, the four gentlemen uh, yeah. who've all been around and been uh, seen boxing go through one, one, let's say, WBA into WBC into ESPN titles. Are they making boxing too hard to get ahead for a new fighter? I mean, there used to be one champ, one title. Now there's the ESPN. The end title is a Thursday night title, the West Coast, the East Coast. Yeah. Uh, for a sport that where a body has to take such abuse and... Uh, Are there, is there too much activity? Really? I mean, the guy works so hard, doesn't he? Uh, where are they going to draw the line as to where right. the guy has to fight 100 fights to get a shot at the champ? Yeah. Well, what does that have to do with, the, let's say, the fighting ability of that one particular man? They could have a trillion... Uh, sanctioned by the boxing body, but if you go out there and kick butt and get the job done, otherwise... He says people... you have to kick butt a hundred times before you even get no, a shot. No, that's not true. That's not true. No, what, what do you got to do, is. Phil? You got to fight the guys that are rated in the top ten. I mean, you can go out there and fight a hundred guys, that. but the guy's not rated, you don't get the opportunity to fight the, for that title. We had to go through a line of fight. I had to go through right. Ernie Shavers. He had to fight somebody for his, and Kenny had to fight. And that's how we got in line to get that opportunity uh -huh. to fight for the title. <clears throat> Just give me a, a brief uh, history of your own childhood. Ken Norton, uh, nobody, nobody had uh, more power than you uh, did, and it's certainly evident by the f way that you've recovered from an accident that w probably would have killed most folks. Uh, you didn't, you know, what was the nature of your childhood? Uh, mom and dad at home, or how many um, kids? My mother and father were at home. I went to high school, had a scholarship to college. I left college, went to the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps went on to fight when I was 24. And, uh, what, did you have a football scholarship in college? Boxing? Basketball, football, and track. Uh -uh. And... <laughs> Where was this? Bay Barton. Where was this? Northeast Missouri State. Uh -huh. And uh, your first fight? I was about 25. Is that really the first time you ever threw a punch at age 25? Well, I was in the Marine Corps, right? And we did the, go to Vietnam and get shot. Or stay and get hit. <laughs> so you stayed and got hit, did you? Yeah. Uh -huh. How much got a coward? Uh, well, and your mother raised no foolish children, we'll Amen. say that. Larry, uh, you, you used to call yourself a street fighter. Uh, were you yeah. as a kid? Well, I was born in Cuthbert, Georgia. That's about 300 miles from Atlanta. Moved to Eastern Pennsylvania at age of five. Went to school, dropped out at the seventh grade, became a fighter, and here I am. Uh -huh. Joe, let me tell you the book on you. I got a line here. I mean, I, this is... Well, the guy who wrote the book, uh, he was guessing. And, well, here's what, uh, here's what we know about you. What I put together was guessing. Uh, uh, wait till mine come around and I'll tell the truth. Some I can live by, some I wouldn't be live by, some I ain't gonna tell. When you were 14, year old, uh, 14 years old, somebody called you a nigger. Oh, uh, no. Trigger. Trigger. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, it was, uh, it, it go back much further than that, uh, Phil. Uh, let's say he was uh, 13 in the family. I was the youngest. Uh, we youngest had to, 13? 13, yeah. I had to race to get to the table and try to, you know, beat my brother and sister. Yeah. I was the youngest. Uh, all jokes aside, I was the youngest, and they had to make sure everything was prepared for me at all times because I was daddy's baby. Uh, I left the South at an early age. I moved to New York. I was here, stealing a few cars. <laughs> New, old, same thing, go to the junkyard. Yeah. <laughs> when I left there, I went to Philadelphia, then I put the gloves on there. Yeah. Uh, when I moved to Philadelphia from New York City by the South, I was already designed. So therefore, all I need is somebody in front of me. Right. Because but, my daddy... But, but you've known... I mean, you, you were the target of a racist uh, slur, didn't oh, you? Oh, I came back. I came from down there. <laughs> the way it was really rough. Did you punch the guy who called you Well, that? we got in a fight, uh, and him and I started tussling, so therefore, 
I got the best of him, and mom didn't feel like uh, I was safe. They started moving it off. She and actually uh, wanted you to move to, just to protect your well, behind. It was rough, so therefore we didn't want no problem. Uh -huh. You know, I wasn't really equipped for that, but now I'm equipped. <laughs> and how about you, Louisville Slugger? <laughs> Had, yeah. This guy had a sweet life all his years. Yeah, you know let I mean? me tell you what I did. Oh, wow. I saw him interviewed yeah. once. Never hard. There never. were lots of guys in your high school bigger than you. You were right. a skinny kid. Uh, there you go. Like, he was a like skinny kid. I'm telling you. He was a middleweight. He was a middleweight. He was a middleweight. And what you was? You don't even know me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, get out of the way. No, yeah. What'd you start off, gang? Why? I don't know. How you gonna say we? I'm gonna tell the difference. You truck. Us big guys look like middleweights to you. I don't care how big you get. I mean, yeah. you guys when you put the collar green, the cornbread man, those do. men, those men. When, we, men when you guys put them gloves on, you wasn't heavyweight. You wasn't full plus. I was a heavyweight in my first. No, no. Randy Gordon over here. When you back here for Mahomes, you was a middleweight. I was a heavyweight. You was a light heavyweight, middleweight. And I cracked your ribs. Let me say this. You hear what he said? Yeah, he, when I was, I was his sparring partner. Right, okay. I was, let me say this real quick. I was his sparring partner. <laughs> don't uh, miss the, don't miss no. the king over here. All right. <laughs> yeah, I was ahead. his sparring partner. He broke my ribs. Uh -huh. But that's okay. I got even with him. I beat up his son, Marvis. Oh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm saying, Joe, these guys, these guys are no full flush heavyweights. Yeah. Neither one of them, you're the only heavy of is me. Uh-huh. The rest of them was light yeah. heavy. Average heads bigger. Light heavy, middle His weight. His head's bigger. And heavy. Heavy. He's got a bigger head. Yeah. You, were the fa you, were, you were faster than anybody in the school. He was, he was light heavy. You had a big guy coming after you and he telegraphed. I heard you say that in an interview and you were quicker. <laughs> Do I have it good? You're not as dumb as you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Are you, uh, is there a brotherhood here? No kidding. I mean, I, I like this guy. I mean, we work together. He does things. Who are you talking about, Joe? Joe, mainly because he's in Philly and I'm in Easton. That's only like 60 miles apart. Yeah. He does fight shows. I put on things for kids and do shows. Wild, he comes. Wild thing. We work together as far as uh -huh. helping the community together. Uh -huh. Kenny and I don't see these guys until we hit the road, but it's always great to see guys like this. And this, people don't realize what this means to come together with champions forever, have four champions, the greatest champions that I feel that ever lived is sitting right here with you, Phil. Gentlemen, I want to know if you'd like the new ruling with the championship fight, 15 rounds or 12 rounds. What do you like? I like, mm -hmm. I like 15. Thank you. Uh, I, I like when if the guy get paid for it. <laughs> I'd like to know how you all feel about the problem with the use of steroids in professional sports and if there's ever been a problem with it in boxing. Well, fighters are using, some fighters are using it. I don't, I don't like no drugs. I condone it. I mean, I think drugs is a bad habit. <laughs> drugs, drugs are killing our society, killing our whole family. People would say, well, you know, it ain't going to happen to me. It ain't going to happen to my family. But I want all y'all to know that it will happen to you, and it will happen in your family. One so of the, uh, one of the uh, testimonials on this uh, tape titled Champions Forever, uh, how do you hope to be remembered? I'll just show you just briefly. How does Ken Norton hope to be remembered? Here's what he said. An intelligent being, a caring being, An individual, even though he was very competitive, I would say in his heart that he, he never wanted to injure anyone. And that he was a man who believed in God.
I'm glad you waited. Hi, caller. Go ahead. Oh, Phil. Yes, sir. Yes. My question's for Larry Holmes. Yes, yes sir. Uh, Larry, you fought Ali and Norton, but what, if anything, of importance got in the way of you fighting Frazier Foreman during your career? Well, Foreman had retired, and Joe Frazier, he just didn't want no parts of me because I'm going to do him like I did his son. <laughs> 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 how how does Larry Holmes want to be remembered? Uh, Listen to this. Roll the tape. The people's champion as I uh, wanted to be while I was fighting. The guy who gave opportunities to fighters that when they got opportunities. A fighter who accomplished set examples. The guy who like walked the road that he wanted to walk. Nice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd just like to say that uh, I see all you guys. You guys are great, but I hope you look out for Mike Tyson when he starts getting in trouble again. <laughs> uh, do you feel any uh, chaperone uh, kind of... Uh, how do you think? I don't really think Mike is getting in that much of trouble as uh, yes, he people. Yes, Joey. Yeah. 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 I was wondering, you guys look real good, but I wonder, do you have to stay in shape? Do you work out? I wor I've been working out because I'm doing an exhibition in Florida, and uh, somebody might come back and give me a, a few million dollars to go out there and fight Joe Frazier. Okay, no problem. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. You say you're working out, huh? Yeah. I got a question for you and you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give uh, the king a pass here, uh -huh. and this auto accident probably exempts yeah. Brother Kenny from this. Can you do this? Yes, sir. You can do this. Yeah, I know I can. How about you? Hold on to this one. Yes, yes, yes sir. Please. I said please. <laughs> All right. Okay. Huh? Go. Huh? huh? Good. Hebrew hop to the barber shop. Hebrew hop to the barber shop. Okay. Smoke and Joe. Yeah, back on. All right. Here they come. Here they come. Hey, Jordan. Jordan. Well done, Joe. Well done. All right. All right, Larry. I just got to jump rope. That's all you're going to do? What is it? We're in New York City with the champions of the world forever. And we'll be back in just a moment. With all the beating and abuse you got, why would you put your son uh, on the ring? You get a lot of beating, man. I didn't know you got a lot of beating. Yeah, Who's that one? You. you. <laughs> I got a lot of beating? She wonders how you could put your son through what you went through. Doesn't that... How do you stand there and watch your kid get hit in the nose? Well, number one, uh, my sons know that this game is no, no play toy. Uh, I tell the boys when they come to the gym to get the brain shook, the money took, and the name on the Undertaker book. <laughs> Besides, that was this note. That's, and the main thing about it is that is nobody in the world can make you fight. They can probably make you do a lot of other things, but fighting? No, no, no. Think about it. You got to come from the inside from that. You got to be there. I Here. never made these boys fight. I love to see them walk around and be a lover. Uh -huh. <laughs> how, how would Joe Fraser like to be remembered? Here's what he said. Roll the tape. Good to me. I, I love it. It's just about when I had people trying to shut it down. I mean, if you didn't make it good, or you didn't make a couple of bucks and you wasn't a good leader, I don't give you the right to knock it down, because boxing has put a lot of players in a lot of people's pockets, same thing as love. Look at it. This is for Joe Frazier. Yes. I was just wondering, uh, me and my girlfriend missed her bus to go back to Philly, so I was wondering if you can give us a ride back. <laughs> Go 
I have a question for the commissioner, New York State Boxing Commissioner I'm Randy. Please to recognize Randy Gordon, the New York State Athletic Commissioner. Glad you're here, Commissioner all right, Gordon. All right, all right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm one of the folks that buy that goes to boxing matches at the Felt Forum. You, I'm concerned about the safety of the boxes. You're putting boxes into the ring with averages like tw 30 fights and 20 losses. That's an average of, of 333. That would be great if he was playing shortstop for the match. They're going to get. I'm going to. The day are is going to come. Are you worried about the physical? Absolutely. We're going to have a, a serious injury in the ring. Something has to be done about that. What do you say about that, Commissioner? There's a lot of matches that go on, and uh, I got to tell you, from maybe about a thousand fights that we've turned down, there have been a few that have snuck past. And uh, if a guy passes his physical, it gets really tough to turn down. But we have been turning down mismatches all over the state, and if we have to put a promoter out of business, we will. But yes, you're right. There have been mismatches that have gotten through. And you're watching? We're trying our best. Yes. Yes, sir. A oh, question for Larry Holmes. Yeah. What would a normal day of conditioning be for you before a fight? Up at five, running three, four, five miles, back to the hotel, do some exercise, get a good breakfast, and off to sleep. And back up again at about three o'clock, go to the gym, shadow box three or four rounds, box five or six, maybe eight rounds, do some jump rope, hit the big bag, hit the heavy bag, do some exercise, take a shower, call my wife on the telephone. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> you say call your wife on the telephone. Is it a bad idea to have your wife in camp and be there and... Uh... That was the olden days. That was the olden days. Olden What's days the matter, days. Joe? You're laughing. What no, is it? I know the olden days. The olden, day, the olden days, you no. couldn't have your wife in the well, camp. Well, well, what does the matter? Today, you can have your wife. You can you can have your wife in the camp if you know what to do. If you discipline yourself. I mean, I can't... What do you do when you have your wife in camp? Was it a good idea to have your wife in camp, Joe? No. Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead, it, caller. If it's good to have your wife home worrying about what she's doing? Well, yes. You, well, then why do you to worry about it? You matter. Hang on. I got some folks in the audience. Mike Tyson's personal life has been exploited by the media. Has that happened to any of you, and how do you feel about it? We don't let that happen to us because we don't do the things that Mike Tyson does. <laughs> How would the prettiest and the greatest boxer of all time like to be remembered? Here's what he said. Listen, I don't have to say I'm the rules. When I quit boxing, the game died. The game died. The Tyson game wrong. But still, when you watch Tyson, he's good, but he's no Muhammad Ali. I was wondering, with um, your schedule must have been really crazy uh, training, what did that do to your family life and your relationship with your kids? Did it hurt the marriage, friends? Well, in my case, no. The only thing that I regret is that now my son plays at Dallas, and I'm, I miss him growing up. Uh-huh. How about you? I think it makes my, my life even stronger because being away from her makes me want to get back to her. So it makes a relationship even stronger when Joe? you miss someone. Oh, well, I never left her. Uh, I'm with boxing every day. And I try to keep myself in condition so I can deal with my boys and the people around the world. And let's say I'm holding fights here, there, right. with Larry, with Patterson, right. and doing the thing. I just, uh, I'm there every day and I'm staying in shape. Yeah. I'm, I'm in condition. Uh -huh. Did uh, your worldwide fame and your championship status affect your marriage at all, Muhammad? Don't get mad. Leave that one alone, okay? No. Tell me you happy married now. Didn't affect He's good. Yes. Good to go. Yes, my question is for Muhammad Ali. Did they have any plans of making a movie of your life? They made two. They made two movies. No more coming, huh? No more. All right. Yes. Yeah. I want to know, what is your position on the comments made by Jimmy the Greek in terms of uh, black male and superiority? He was right. <laughs> Tell us. You know, Tell he, us, Larry. See, one of the things that people get, you know, they did bring us over here and they did bred us. 
They did make us big. They did make us strong. And they, they condemned him for it. They should have they condemned a lot of other people for worse things that they said, but he only was telling the truth. Well, but the point has to be made. So he made it. Well, I want to... I, <laughs> before the turn of the centuries, the uh, turn of the century, all most jockeys were black. They breed those people, too? Oh, yeah, they go for the pygmy tribe and get those. <laughs> Yeah, give me that. Here you go. I want you to, I want you to each to sign this glove, and then uh, we'll give it to a lucky person in the audience. So, and we'll be back in just a moment. Tomorrow at noon, Oprah goes in search of New York women who possess classic chic. Consumers, when is it? The tape is titled Champions Forever. I'm pleased to recommend it to attention. Some of the greatest moments in uh, modern boxing history is starring all of the people who've been guesting with us today. I've got an autographed boxing glove, legit, everlast. I'm not sure. Wide shot, wide shot. Let's take a wide shot.